and those no-name monsters hit me with a hot buttered biscuit. So now I have to change. What'd you say, Maggie? The radio was on so loud, I couldn't hear you. Well, I just remarked that one of those no-neck monsters messed up my lovely sparkly dress, so now I have to change. Why do you call Goopers kiddies no-neck monsters? Because they've got no necks. Their fat little heads are set on their fat little bodies without any visible connection. Hear them? Hear them screaming? I tell you, I got so nervous at that dinner table tonight, I thought I would throw back my head and utter a scream you could hear across the Arkansas border. Well, I want you to know, Big Daddy hadn't been at that table for more than two minutes with those five no-neck monsters slobbering and drooling over their food before he threw down his fork and shouted, For God's sake, Goober, why don't you put them pigs in a trough in the kitchen? I swear, I simply could have died. Think of it, Brick. They've got five of them, and number six is coming. Why, they brought the whole bunch of them down here, like animals, to display at a county fair. What the hell have those children doing tricks all the time, along with constant little remarks and innuendos about the fact that you and I have not produced any children, are totally childless, and therefore totally useless? Of course, it's comical, but it's also disgusting since it's so obvious what they're up to. What are they up to, Maggie? Oh. Oh. Such as how she refused twilight sleep when the twins were delivered because she believes motherhood's an experience that ought to be experienced fully in order to fully appreciate the wonder and the beauty of it all. Huh, producing those no-neck monsters. Why are you looking at me like that? Like what, Maggie? The way you were looking at me just now, before I caught your eye in the mirror and you started to whistle. I don't know how to describe it, but it froze my blood. I've caught you so often looking at me like that lately. What are you thinking of when you look at me like that? I wasn't conscious of looking at you, Maggie. Well, I was conscious of it. What were you thinking? I don't remember thinking anything, Maggie. Don't you think I know? Don't you think I know? Know what? That I've gone through this hideous transformation. Become hard, frantic, cruel. That's what you've been observing in me lately. <laughs> How could you help but observe it? Well, that's all right. I'm not thin-skinned anymore. Can't afford to be thin-skinned anymore. But, Brick... Brick? You say something, Maggie? I was gonna say something. That I get lonely. Very. Everybody gets that. Living with someone you love can be lonelier than living entirely alone. If the one that you love doesn't love you. Would you like to live alone, Maggie? No. God, I wouldn't. Did you have a nice bed? Was the water cool? No. But it made you feel fresh, huh? Fresh, sure. I know something that would make you feel much fresher. What, Maggie? An alcohol rub or cologne. A rub with cologne. Well, that's good after a workout, Maggie, but I haven't been working out much lately. You've kept in good shape, though. You think so, Maggie? I always thought drinking men lost their looks, but I was plainly mistaken. Well, thanks, Maggie. You're the only drinking man I know. It never seems to put fat on. I'm getting softer, Maggie. Well, sooner or later, it's bound to soften you up. 
It's just beginning to soften up Skippo when... I'm sorry. I never could keep my fingers off a saw. I wish you would lose your looks. No such luck. I actually think you've gotten better looking since you've gone on the bottle. Of course, you always had that detached quality. That rare sort of charm. The charm. You look so cool. So cool. So enviably cool. You were a wonderful lover. And I think mostly because you were really indifferent to it. Isn't that right? Never had any anxiety about it. Did it naturally, easily, with absolute confidence and perfect calm. <laughs> More like opening the door for a lady or seating her at a table than giving expression to any longing for her. You know, if I thought that you would never, never never make love to me again. I would go downstairs to the kitchen and pick out the longest, sharpest knife I could find and stick it straight into my heart. I swear that I would. Watch out. You're gonna miss it. <laughs> you just don't know. But one thing I don't have is the charm of the defeated. My hat is still in the ring, and I'm determined to win. Later tonight, I'm gonna tell you that I love you. And maybe by that time, you'll be drunk enough to believe me. What were you thinking of when I caught you looking at me like that? Were you thinking of Skipper? Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> 